Welcome to the Rocky Mountain AI Interest Group. The following meeting entitled Generative AI in Education took place on August 8, 2023 at the Atlas Building on the CU Boulder campus. The following presentation was made by Dr. Teresa Nugent. For future meetings, check out our meetup group and also our website at rmaiig.org. Okay, let me introduce our second speaker, Dr. Teresa Nugent. She's an associate teach, teaching professor of English at here at CU Boulder, where she teaches in-person and online classes, including writing composition, literary analysis, Shakespeare, and science fiction. She's currently working with colleagues to create a writing in the age of AI course to help students develop the practical and analytical language skills that they'll need for success as technology transforms how we communicate and write. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Teresa Nugent. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for um, to Dan for inviting me to join you guys tonight. Um, I am not here as a technical guru, uh, so I'm like kind of blown away by what we just saw and all the things that that Peter is um, having creating and. We need to talk. <laughs> um, so I am here as a one of the many human humanists who kind of got bowled over this past uh, spring when Chat GTP Chat GTP came out, and we just sort of like, oh my gosh, what is this thing? So um, I have been teaching in English uh, literature and writing classes for over twenty years. Um, and I've also, a lot of those classes have been online that I uh, teach for continuing ed or I teach for the Department of English. And um, I don't think very many people in our department were, were prepared for this to come. So there's been a lot of gnashing of teeth, I would say, in, in, uh, in places outside of uh, the engineering building. Um, so I wanted to get a sense, and it, I, Dan already did this. I was going to ask how, who all was here in terms of educators and how many of you. The one question that wasn't on his list is how many of you were teaching in classrooms or online uh, during this past year? So I just have really a few of you who are like in the trenches right now in terms of, you know, like, like my students, are they, what are they doing and, and how do I know? And as you mentioned, none of the um, AI generator detectors really work. So it's a whole different ball game from the kind of plagiarism uh, issues that we've had up until now where you know we have pretty reliable detectors and we can sit down with the students and say, well, this paper that you gave me also appears on this website, why? <laughs> Um, or you know it's from this paper mill or whatever, and this is just not that 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 situation. So um, I'm curious how everyone is feeling. Um, how many of you are feeling overwhelmed? Thank you. <laughs> um, anxious. Thank you. Good. Um, cautiously optimistic. Yes. Good. Good. And excited. All right, well, this is a very good optimistic group. So that's that's cool. Um, if I was in the English department, I don't think that would be quite the same number distribution of hands. But but uh, so to give you a sense of where I'm coming from, this is how I felt when I first started realizing what was going on. Um, this, this I, like, oh, how am I, what, what am I gonna do with this? So as many of you were in similar situations, you were all reading the same news. Um, some of the, the headlines that Peter showed. Uh, teachers are concerned about cheating. That's a big, big one. Um, New York banned AI, uh, chat GPT in their school system. Um, some people are predicting that, you know, teachers won't be needed anymore, which of course makes everyone go a little crazy. This is the one that I think was struck me the most that broke all the illusions that you know anything was going to ever be the same again. Uh, a Columbia University student wrote for the Chronicle of Education about how many students were using ChatGPT, how they were using it, and how it was not detectable. But he also outlined for a lot of, of uh, educators how 
this could be something positive. This could be used in ways that we could help uh, improve writing. And I think that was a little bit mind blowing too for a lot of us. So one of the things he, he did in this article was he called out faculty to start reassessing how they teach and start reassessing how, what students need to learn and know how, how to function in this AI world that we are all in now, whether we like it or not. Um, so there we are. So these are some of uh, the responses that I started hearing from colleagues in the spring. Um, and many of them really wanted to ban AI um, and had to be convinced begrudgingly that that's really not an option. Um, a lot of them started saying, okay, I'm gonna have all handwritten assignments. I'm going to um, no more take home essays, back to blue books, more in-class testing, more oral exams and presentations. Uh, and not, and the, some of those things are good ideas, uh, but it, they are certainly not scalable if you have 200 or 600 or more students in a classroom. The testing to some extent is. Um, so we're slowly sort of wrapping our heads around, okay, in, in the English class, you know, what kinds of assignments, if everything is available out on the web and chat GPT has come and scraped it all up and can regurgitate it and rearrange it, then what can we ask students to do that is different? And so this move towards more introspective assignments, um, getting them to, find their own personal connections to the text that they're reading. Those are some of the ideas. Um, more active learning, which of course has been a mantra in the education world for some time, but this might get some more uh, faculty actually do, practicing it. Uh, classroom discussions, debates, role-playing, projects, um, presentations. All of this, I think, is that this is when we start to see sort of the energizing side of what is coming and what the, the positives can be for what how educators are responding in the classroom. And then uh, some people are actually also saying, you know, we need to rethink plagiarism completely. Uh, this is one of the um, websites that I recommend uh, to faculty who are looking for um, suggestions on how to integrate AI into their, their teaching, uh, ditchthattextbook.com uh, by Matt Miller. And uh, so he's got, you know, sort of this whole spectrum and, and, and he's not saying one is, one definitely is plagiarized and one's not, but, but let's sort of map this out and ask students to do certain things with AI and then use it to uh, look at their writing and think through, you know, what's working, what's not. I don't have, uh, not the, 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 the level of, of computerizing it all um, and having AI uh, already integrated to that extent. But if I'm in a classroom with 20 students, I can be, you know, having them run questions and discussions and conversations with ChatGPT and sharing those conversations with me. And I can be looking at those and we can be talking amongst ourselves so that there's this, this hybrid human AI ongoing interaction for them to really focus on the writing process instead of just, I need to do this paper, here it is, good, I'm done. I can check that off my list and, and go on. And so, and along, along with all the, the wringing of hands, there was some, um, some you know, hopeful glimmers of this could, this could work out, this could work out well. Uh, teachers are inviting chat GPT into the classroom. Um, don't ban it, teach with it. And uh, that was the New York Times, um, Kevin Roos, uh, I believe, or am I getting that mixed up? Not sure. Um, and then, uh, maybe this is actually the thing that's going to change the whole playing field in a really positive way. So things are, you know, maybe looking up. So these are my takeaways. It's not going away. We need to, to, to figure out how to work with AI tools. Uh, and it's a constant process because they, they are continuing to get better. The hallucinations seem to be um, not as in, uh, extreme as they were. Um, the layers that different um, 
um, tools are going to keep spreading over the, the, the AI bots uh, and all the ways that they're going to make things more seamless. So it's going to be this um, learning curve. And I don't quite know where we are on it yet and how big it's going to get. Uh, students, that's the, the number one thing is that students are going to need to know how to do this in a workplace. And that's, that's the message that I am uh, actively trying to send and share with my colleagues and um, send to students, some of whom are also in denial about this, uh, especially in the humanities, I think. Um, so then the graduate students who are learning how to teach and they're having to struggle with this, it's, it's um, they're, not, they're not all like you guys. <laughs> So it, it's, a, it's a process of uh, kind of getting everyone to a point where they feel like this is okay, I can do this. Um, and, and that's really important for the students uh, for a number of reasons, which I will go through here. They need to learn how to use AI safely so that they don't hurt themselves. And this is a, a, a question that I have that perhaps this room can talk about. Um, one of the things that I've heard is that when students feed chat GPT with their own writing, often uh, it comes back and it gets picked up by things like turn it in and then they get flagged for plagiarism when just because their work is in the system then so that's something i want to learn more about and educate my colleagues about so that we don't make uh, uh, bad assumptions about what our students are doing and make false accusations um, using it responsibly so we don't harm others and that's this long list of of social justice issues, accessibility issues, um, environmental issues. Um, and then I'm also very much concerned about how the things that we're doing in the classroom, when we make changes such as suddenly we want students to do more oral presentations, say, or in-class writing. Over the last several years, we have really built out our um, our accommodation for a variety of learning needs. And some of those require extra time for testing or they require technical devices to perform writing exercises. Or um, this is a long list of, th of there's a lot of anxiety um, issues that students that some students have about doing uh, performance in front of other people. So we've been really working hard to accommodate uh, all these different situations. And it feels like all of a sudden, all that's getting thrown out the window because, okay, we got to go back to old school and um, you know do these other things so students can't cheat. And so I'm really worried about the effects that it's going to have on those students. And we need to take some time to figure out how to make sure that we don't lose our, our um, sensitivity to all those different needs. So that's another one of the, the responsibility pieces from the educator side. And then students need to know how to use AI effectively. And this is just sort of the, the bare, the, you know, the base um, practical, which tool for which purposes, for what kind of tasks, um, so that when they go into a work environment and they're asked to do certain things and they're expected to know how to do this, they have some idea how to do it. Um, and then the most important piece of this that I think is our responsibility as educators is to help students develop a sense of confidence that they can deal with this. It's gonna keep changing. Um, we're gonna keep going through disruptions. We're gonna keep going through new uh, technologies that are gonna come along. So you can't just learn one and say, okay, I'm good for a while. But we kind of learned now that that's not gonna be the case. Um, but some of our students haven't learned that yet. And then they get overwhelmed and they give up. So we have to help them sort of de develop this sense that, okay, I, I know how to learn, period. And I can keep learning new, new technology, new methods and move forward. So one of the things that I tend to do and, and my, my colleagues tend to do as uh, humanists is we look for historical paradigms. And this is the list of, of very recent ones that will be familiar to all of you. Um, we all just made it through the pandemic and did a lot of very quick um, uh, adjustments on the fly to teach online when it wasn't necessarily the way that a lot of people were teaching before. 
um, the effects of social media, the smartphone, the web, uh, and the calculator is a very frequent um, uh, analogy used for thinking about AI right now. Um, there are some situations where you want someone to, to not use a calculator so they can show that they really understand how math works. But then other situations, it's like, yeah, you need to use a calculator because we've got to get onto higher levels. So there's going to be similar scenarios with AI. And we just have to kind of work our way through and figure out what, what those are and uh, how do we help students figure out which ones to use when. But I also am very um, enamored with older models. So the telegraph, all of a sudden, uh, communication could spread long distances much more quickly than it had been previously. This was a huge technological change that, changed, that, that affected uh, life tr tremendously in, in good and bad ways. The printing press was heralded as the instrument of the devil by many people when it was doing its work initially. Um, and it, it brought about wars and, and persecutions and all kinds of, of, of uh, um, extreme revolutions came into play because of the printing press. And even the technology of writing itself was controversial and contested. Socrates uh, was very um, uh, distrustful of the effects of writing and felt that those who wanted to really um, possess knowledge and wisdom would put their, themselves in detriment by writing down uh, information because then they wouldn't memorize it. It would not become part of them. Um, and I find this really interesting and I pulled out a quote from the section where he, his, uh, his writings, which he doesn't write. He didn't write it down, his ideas, but Plato wrote them down, thank goodness. Um, and so, the, of course, this is a translation. You provide your students with the appearance of wisdom, not with its reality, when you have them write it down. Well, doesn't that sound an awful lot like what people might be saying right now about AI? And I just thought that was particularly interesting. And then I wanted to pair it with this other quote from a current um, leading expert on AI and edu education who, wrote, who says, humans need to excel at things AI cannot do. And that means more creativity and critical thinking and less memorization. So over the span of many, many um, millennia, the idea that memorization is what is is the basis of knowledge has obviously shifted. And I'm just, I'm very intrigued by, you know, how are we going to continue to, how is our, our definitions of, of knowledge and, and wisdom going to continue to evolve and, and shift over time? So now what? Um, so uh, with all this sort of big picture thinking, I'm going back to my classes and getting ready for the fall and thinking, okay, what am I doing? And what are my primary goals? And going back to the basics, um, I want my students to come out of my classes having developed their critical thinking skills and be, having their, their curiosity and their creativity fostered and nurtured. Those are, those are major goals. Um, I want them to develop empathy. And this may sound like a, an unusual one to some of you, but this is very much a focus of, of humanities courses. Empathy and compassion. When people are able to put themselves into other people's shoes, uh, read their stories, think about their stories, and think about the, the challenges that they've, they've gone through, they become more uh, understanding of, of other perspectives. And that's very much what uh, one of our, our goals in, in certainly in uh, literature uh, classes. Obviously writing and communication. I mean, those are basic skills and, and that's pretty much across many um, sectors of the university, um, not just in the humanities. Collaboration skills that you mentioned uh, are, are becoming, I think, more and more important again as we, uh, think about more project work. Um, but then the last one again is the one I mentioned earlier, the intellectual agility, that sense that I can do this, I can learn new things, and I can constantly be adjusting and adapting 
with whatever comes along because I've done it in the past and I kind of know how to think and learn, even if I can't always anticipate where the next challenge is coming from. So with all of this in mind, um, some colleagues of, of mine and I got together this summer and decided, okay, we need to rethink the way that we are teaching writing, integrate AI, and think about our writing courses in particular uh, as a place where our students can start learning how to use these tools as part of the writing process. And so we proposed developing a, a writing in the age of AI class. And we are also going to propose a certificate in, in this topic that um, would have a number of, how much time do I have? Not much. So I can tell you more about this if you wanna know more about this, what, the Q and A. Um, and um, so that's more details about the class. And what I plan to do this fall uh, is do more group work, more project work, but we're also gonna be doing assignments where they're required to have conversations with chatbots and bring that into their thinking process, put those, uh, that chatbot into different roles, have, uh, have that bot challenge them about different things, and they're going to uh, assess the output that they get. Whoops. Um, and they're also gonna do a lot of verification of, of sources because that's a big question that we have in the humanities about whether or not students uh, are gonna rely on sources without checking them or uh, if they're gonna learn how to really figure out is this a, a credible and a, a, an authentic source. And then my final thing I just wanna um, end with is the sense that, and this, I think I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, right? But, um, but my, my message going forward to, to whoever will listen is that the AI bots are not sentient. It's the humans who construct and project a persona on the language that machine learner, learning um, mechanisms put in front of us. And it's the humans who ultimately need to figure out how are we going to use this technology to shape the future. <laughs>